Our final topic for this uh, lesson and for this module is anaerobic cellular respiration. I don't have it written up here yet. I'm uh, about to change this diagram from aerobic to anaerobic respiration. And to do it, I basically have to clear it off. Because what is anaerobic respiration? That's when there is insufficient oxygen for all of this. And so, what would uh, create insufficient oxygen? Well, in people, it might be uh, that you're exerting yourself. Uh, maybe you enjoy running a 5K every now and then, or maybe a half marathon, or you play basketball real hard, or you just ran up the stairs to a class or something. Uh, you start huffing and puffing. Why are you huffing and puffing? Because your system is laboring to get the required oxygen to your uh, mitochondria for cellular respiration to release energy, and your muscles may start burning and so forth. And why is that? Well, if uh, you're uh, sucking down oxygen, but you can't get it down fast enough to take care of your energy needs because you are trying to get a new uh, personal record on a uh, 5K or something, if you can't get enough oxygen to your cells, to your mitochondria, especially in your muscle cells, the electron transport chain, I mean, if you push hard enough, the electron transport chain is going to bog down. And it just so happens that the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, there's a bunch of things that cycle back and forth between those two. And so when the electron transport chain bogs down, uh, so does the Krebs cycle. And so uh, uh, you would, uh, if you push yourself far enough, at least in your muscle cells, uh, you would be pushing yourself toward glycolysis only. And that's a problem. It's a problem involving uh, ATP, energy. You can't help but slow down and start sucking some oxygen. We're going to talk about yeast in a minute. Can yeast do all this aerobic stuff? Yes, yeast can. But human beings, they uh, deprive yeast of oxygen in two major in industries. And so uh, when yeast are deprived of oxygen, they don't do all this. They only do part of it. Which parts do they do? They do glycolysis only. So uh, aerobic respiration, all of these, anaerobic respiration, as when you uh, deprive for some reason uh, there's a depri oxygen deprivation and uh, we're moving to glycolysis only. Uh, before I race the board, are we all, as we sit in this classroom, you're sitting at home, I'm sitting in my office, are we in the aerobic or the anaerobic mode? Well I sure hope. I mean I don't know you personally. Uh, I mean I can't see you. You can see me, I can't see you. I hope uh, you're in the aerobic mode. And uh, uh, how can uh, you tell when someone who is uh, just kind of like sitting still, uh, just sitting, is not in the anaerobic mode without some help? What are they carrying? They may have a backpack or a little pool deal that has, what, a tank of oxygen. They can't get enough oxygen because uh, they have lung damage or something. And as when you see a person who is carting around a tank of oxygen, are they usually a younger person or an older person? Probably an older person. And if you uh, somehow were able to find out about that person's life history, what habit might it include or what activity? Yeah, smoking, right? Smoking. Smoking does lung damage and um, Thank goodness some of you are smokers. I never was. I, uh, I was a track guy all through high school, college and so forth. And I wasn't all that fast. I didn't want to be any slower. So, you know, smoking is one thing I never did. I did some other things that were kind of crazy or uh, counterproductive, you might say, or potentially counterproductive, but I didn't do that. Uh, but, uh, uh, and so, uh, those of you who are smokers, you might uh, think about something here. Here I am. I'm old. See, I'm, I'm 66 as we speak. I've got 16 grandchildren. Every week I get together with some of them and play with them and chase them around and toss them around, wrestle them, go out and play a little basketball with them. Uh, now, if I was pulling an oxygen tank, could I do that quite so easily? I don't think so. And so, you, uh, if you're a smoker, you might think, why it's hard to stop. Why should I really want to do that? Well, you might, you might think about whether 
or not when you're my age you want to chase your grand, uh, grandchildren around or pull a you know oxygen tank I'd much rather chase my grandchildren around fact is I just I kind of like to chase my wife around for a few more years as well so hey you know uh, so uh, I want to be in the aerobic uh, mode when I'm just kind of sitting here uh, but anaerobics now anaerobics is when uh, you're deprived of oxygen fact is this term aerobics that's a uh, that's a, you know that's a human that's an activity right aerobics and uh, you know if you go by an aerobics class that's kind of fun to watch right and uh, I used to belong to uh, a YMCA where I'd see aerobics classes going on it's a great spectator sport and uh, you know they usually have I don't know why they have big glass windows uh, outside the aerobics room and you can look in and you hear the music oh it's bouncy and they've got a athletic looking person up front with a little headset and mouthpiece and they're calling the next move and they get oh I don't know 20 or 30 people out there just just going through the routine they step up step down but if I walked by toward the end of the class it kind of looked like some people uh, were having a lot less fun than other people why is that well because what was this aerobics class doing it was pushing them into anaerobic respiration probably should be called anaerobics instead of aerobics so anaerobic respiration when uh, those poor people toward the end of the class they look like they're hanging on for dear life uh, they were trying real hard to suck in oxygen but the their activity level the oxygen wasn't able to keep up their mitochondria but what's the whole deal with uh, aerobic or anaerobic or whatever you want to call it it's to improve your body's ability to process oxygen so if they keep doing it they'll get better and better but how can I turn this into a diagram of anaerobic respiration well first of all I will change the title from aerobic to anaerobic a n a e r anaerobic and I'm going to erase most of it yes I am because in anaerobic respiration if it's pushed far enough you're pushing yourself toward glycolysis only and that represents an energy crisis how many ATPs you're getting charged up out of every uh, molecule of glucose not 36 only two you can't help but slow down and you can't help it you just you just got to slow down suck oxygen whatever you're doing you gotta slow down now let's think of those two major human industries in which yeast are deprived of oxygen um, uh, what are they well I think they're alcoholic beverage and bread making or baking and so we've got uh, alcoholic beverage alcoholic beverage and we've got bread making And, uh, and so, uh, uh, what's the deal with that? Well, yeast being deprived of oxygen still do glycolysis. They still produce pyruvic acid, but that pyruvic acid is not taken into the mitochondria because the mitochondria basically are shut down due to lack of oxygen. What does the pyruvic acid do? It goes off into alternate metabolic pathways and as far as yeast are concerned what is produced well alcohol and CO2 and so uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about this one or this one they both produce yeast in both cases produce alcohol and CO2 you say Are you sure about that? yes and so the alcoholic beverage makers they they uh, collect the alcohol maybe the CO2 but definitely the alcohol bread making what do they want from this uh, anaerobic respiration of yeast? They want the bubbles of CO2 to make the baked product to what? To rise. To rise. And um, it's a, the alcohol, what does it do? Well, your book tells you right there. But I'll, you probably read it already, right? What does it do? What does the alcohol do? It evaporates. So in the oven, in the oven, uh, you know, the uh, alcohol evaporates. Um, by the way, it's a <clears throat> it's a tough life being a yeast. What happens to the yeast in the eventually in the heat of the oven? It kills the yeast. What happens to the uh, yeast that are brewing your uh, somebody's uh, alcoholic beverage? Well, if it gets above a percentage, certain percentage, 14 percent or so, it kills the yeast. It's 
it's a rough life being yeast. Can you brew your own here in the Oklahoma, USA? I think you can, but you got to follow certain rules. And uh, but uh, yeah, you you can brew your own if you you happen to want to. All right, so yeast deprived of oxygen, yeast can do all of aerobic respiration, but deprived of oxygen, yeast. Uh, go through glycolysis, they do the glycolysis thing, they produce the pyruvic acid, the pyruvic acid does not enter the mitochondria, it produces the two byproducts of what? That goes off in another pathway, produces alcohol and CO2. And that's what the, that is what is uh, used by the alcohol beverage and the bread making folks. What about us? If you're running a 5K, your muscles burn, what, what's that all about? Well, the glycolysis has taken place. You're pushing yourself towards uh, some oxygen deprivation because you're pushing as hard as you can. The finish line's in sight. I see it down there. You're going to try to try to beat that person in front of you, that person on the back of the shirt that says, I may be slow, but I'm ahead of you. So you're going to try to beat that person. You get into more oxygen deprivation, and this pyruvic acid uh, doesn't go into the side of the mitochondria. It also goes into alternate metabolic pathways what uh, where, where does it go what is it what's the end product there lactic acid yeah that's what makes the muscles burn lactic acid how do you get rid of it slow down suck oxygen that's what the professional football players are doing on the sideline they come in after a football play <laughs> their coach wants to get them from aerobic to anaer I mean anaerobic back to aerobic respiration as quick as possible get them back out in the field and so forth all right and so uh, that is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic, all three stages, all three stages. Anaerobic, you're pushing yourself. Actually, with yeast, you actually are getting to glycolysis only. All right, that's it.